Hey everybody, welcome to my first episode of the Woodworking Talk Show. Cheryl, what do you think? You think I need to come up with a better name <laughs> than the, the Woodworking I mean, Talk Show? It's not super catchy, but... <laughs> I mean, it's something I can work on. This, this whole thing is just a work in progress. So basically what I want to do with this series is talk to other woodworkers and kind of woodworking adjacent creators. My hope is that with these shows, we'll be able to get to know some woodworkers better and introduce you to people that you might not know. And to kick things off, I want to welcome Shara McKiston of Woodwork, or I'm sorry, of Woodshop Diaries, who's been building projects for the past four years on her channel and accumulating four million views. Hey, Shara, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay, so I was doing some research here. You started your channel in 2013 but I noticed your first video on there is 2016. <laughs> so were, were you just kind of lurking? It? But I also noticed your first video was like a blooper reel, which kind of implies that you'd already shot some video. Yeah, I'm just a creeper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, so the blooper reel came from, I was filming a audition tape Thing for this contest that Mrs. Myers, like the cleaning, like soap. Company, oh yeah, yeah. Mrs. Myers, they were doing. I don't even remember anymore. It was some kind of a contest, and I was a finalist in the contest, and I had to like shoot a video, like showing some of my projects. And so anyway, I don't even know why I posted that blooper reel, but that was like bloopers from me filming that audition tape. And then I didn't do any other video for a long time because it was just really time consuming, and I didn't see the value in it. And I wish that I had of because, you know, now I'm like three years further behind than if I had just kept, sorry, the lighting's really crazy. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's where that blooper reel came from. But I didn't really start getting serious, I don't think, until it was probably 2018, I guess, is when I started like consistently posting. Right. And that's videos. something you've have been doing is consistently posting especially in this past year man you have been cranking out project videos i mean almost on a weekly basis right yeah yeah i try really hard to do every week it, it's exhausting <laughs> yeah and especially because you're, you're making like proper furniture projects too there's some big projects you are making which is really impressive well thank you yeah it's i feel like i'm like i build for four days and then i just like edit like for two days and then I have like a day of like promoting and then I start the whole process over and it's like I don't know how long I can sustain it I'm trying to kind of figure out which direction I want to go with my channel that's a little bit more sustainable but right now it's mostly just project after project after project and I'm still figuring it out <laughs> do you find though that that's really helped to grow your channel by doing yeah, that? yeah yeah I think so I I I guess my first year I did some smaller projects just because obviously those aren't nearly as time consuming and they all like flopped. It was terrible. And so I noticed like the only thing that did well on my channel was like big projects. Well, like it takes more than just 30 minutes or an hour to build these ginormous projects. And so anyway, I've been trying to like go big or go home, I guess, for the last couple of years. And it's, I mean, it's, it's done well. It's just, a little challenging need an yeah. extra set of hands <laughs> i think your most recent project was like is like a porch swing except it's a porch bed swing yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god i, I want to sleep in that i mean it's, I it's a it's a full well it's like a twin size bed right yeah on a, on a porch that's crazy yeah, it's actually my friends i'm kind of jealous because i don't have a porch that big and she asked me to make it for her and i was like yeah i can do that but like when i hung it up and like left the house i was like i really wish this was my house like <laughs> Where are you? Where are you located? I'm in West Kentucky. Oh, in so, Kentucky. Like, okay. Nowheresville. There's <laughs> nothing here. I'm literally surrounded by corn right now outside my shop door. Really? Yeah. And your shop is in your garage too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it completely your shop, or do you have to share it? I have to share it. There's like a tractor and a lawnmower right, right behind here. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid but lawnmower! Get out I of there. Know. Stupid yard work. Why do we have to do that? Just let it grow. I don't care. Um, actually, I don't know if I don't know if you knew this or if you even find this remotely interesting. But two years ago, well, I guess it's been three years ago now. Um, we actually built our our house. It's a thirty by fifty garage. 
Yeah, I saw that. A, a garage apartment, you called it. Yeah, it, we call it garage apartment. It's basically, we built a 30 by 50 and we put a divider wall in it and half is my shop and half is our house. And it's just one big room with a bathroom in the corner. Um, obviously the bathroom has walls, but there's no other walls in the... <laughs> so the open the floor house. plan. Yeah, it's a studio. <laughs> Right. Fancy. Right. So and you're building on the house? Is that the plan? Well, we we bought eight acres and um, we were going to build our house house like next door to this and like make this whole thing my shop. Um, but we've kind of changed our plans and then the market went crazy. And so now like we're just kind of waiting things out. So anyway, it's it's nice to have a I have a good size shop, but I wish I had a normal size house too but it is. <laughs> how big is your living space um it's like 750 to 800 square feet oh it's like my so. apartment in san francisco <laughs> was <laughs> it's a small a small it's area. decent but it's not ideal bigger than the shop bigger than the shop or the same size it's about the same size right yeah like maybe Pri priorities yeah right <laughs> exactly that's great wow so what have you always been building things or was this something relatively new? Um, no, I started building like my very first stuff, like way, way back when was some like pallet signs. And it's funny because um, one of your videos, you talked about how you don't recommend pallet wood for beginners. Oh, yeah. And that's, <laughs> that's exactly how I started. I was like with pallet wood because it was free. Um, but anyway, I started like piddling around with pallet wood. I had like a hammer and a jigsaw and I made all kinds of things with a hammer and a jigsaw. And then um, we bought a house and remodeled the kitchen and I wanted a big, like a huge dining table. And those are really expensive. And so my dad was like, we could just build one of those. And so um, he kind of got me on the idea of making one myself. And so we built this table. And then after that, like I was sold, like this is the coolest thing ever. Let's build all the things. And so it just kind of grew from there. And you built that out of the pallet wood? No, I didn't build a table no. out of pallet wood. I use like pine, like, you know. Yeah. I did yeah. have some railroad ties is what I use for the legs. Nice. So those were free, like leftover. Yeah, scrap. pallet wood is, is it, I mean, it's cheap. It's free in a lot of cases, but it's a lot of work, especially if yeah. you're a beginner and, and you've got, oh my God, I got to pull this thing apart. There's going to be a ton of nails. It's going to be dirty. It was the worst. <laughs> the nails, the nails were awful because like sometimes they'd get stuck in there and like they're halfway out and like they're, you know, oh, crooked yeah. and you can't, and yeah, they're not even worth it. And they got those really weird, those twisty nails, you know, they're like, they twist yes. in there. <laughs> like a screw nail. Right. Even, yeah. uh, it's like a special gun that fires those things in. They're really long. And it's like, just, oh my God. It's, yeah. I kind of went through that whole pallet furniture craze for a while it was you know woodworking at least on youtube goes through these little trends and then, <laughs> that was one of those trends everybody was making everything out of out of pallet wood but you know i got some nice projects yeah, it was definitely a thing for a while yeah yeah and you were doing you probably were doing your blog before youtube is that right oh yeah 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 um i started my blog around that time that i started making things out of pallets and i think that was 2015, I can't remember the exact date. I think it was 2015. And then um, I started, I'm sorry, the lighting's like terrible. I can like turn this. Um, so I started like kind of getting more serious about the blog in probably 2017. And then I started getting serious about YouTube kind of 2018-ish. So the blog definitely did come first, but I didn't really know what I was doing on either thing when I first got started. So all of my really old stuff is like super embarrassing. Like I need to just go like trash it all and pretend like I was. I feel the same way about all of my stuff. It was <laughs> anything that I shot like you know, even last year, I'm like, oh, I don't like that now. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> I have one video that is it's like my most, I hate it so much. And it's like my very, it's like router 101 basics video. I hate it because I, I was so awful in that. Cause it was, I was, it was the beginning of YouTube. It was like 2009 and I was like doing this Ray William Johnson kind of thing. It was a really trendy thing at the time to like hold the camera and you're like, ah, right in your face with it and everything. And <laughs> half of the comments on that are like, God, this guy's such a deuce. This guy, oh, I hate this. This is, <laughs> so I'm like, ah. But the video is like one of those that just performs so well. Yeah. I mean, it just constantly. So I'm, I'm like, sure oh. it's like really searchable too, you know? Yeah, like, it is. Yeah. It is. I always, yeah. I keep thinking I'm going to remake that one of these days. And so it's on my list of things. I'll just reshoot it and do it better now. And 
Yeah. Is there any project? It won't perform as well now, though now. Like, you know, like every no. time you like, go back and redo something, it never does well the same time. Yeah, it depends. You know, I, I found, though, it's... It, there's some projects I like to redo. Like I just did a my cutting board. This is like the third cutting board I've done, you know. And uh, I think we often run into this kind of feeling where we're like, well, I don't really want to do that because I've already done that project. And, and people will, will not like that or they'll call you out on it. Like, oh, are you doing the same thing over and over? But um, I think it's good because you actually improve, you know, you're you're better at making video, you're better at building projects. And so sometimes that works out really well to just redo those old, old projects. And I think a lot of times too, like people don't remember that you already did that either. No, so it's no. like to them, it's brand new. Like, yeah, I have we, to remind myself that people aren't obsessed with me. You know right. what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to remember that I just posted this right. last year. Like no. repost it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you think, you think, well, you have subscribers and you think that, well, I've seen all of my videos. Surely they've seen all of my exactly. videos. No, no they, haven't. they haven't. You know, people, what happens is whenever they find you, that's kind of when they start watching you. And so now yeah. people, for the most part, haven't seen. And if they have been following you for a long time and, and you make a redo a video, they're like, oh, usually they're just like, hey, this is really cool. I remember this the first time you did this. So they're like the super fans, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you interact much with your audience? I try my hardest to respond to every comment on every channel all the time and every email. Like, cause, cause I am, I mean, I'm like growing, but I'm still very small. Like it's, it's getting harder and harder to keep up with everything. But while I still can, I'm going to try just because I think it's, I don't know. I feel like that's my job. You know what I mean? Like right. if I'm going to put the content out there, it's my job to respond to the the comments and the questions. And so I try. But I'm not a very social person, so it's very robotic. I feel like a lot of times, you know, like I'm just very like professionally responding and not super personal. What's your favorite part of the whole process of making videos? Do you like building the projects, editing, shooting? Honestly, probably the um photography like i'm not even like good at it at all but like i just started like really in the last like couple of years i really started like changing the settings on my camera to like see what happens and like figuring out my editing software a little bit better as far as like the colors and like how to change like what things look like and um i'm not good by any means but i think it's really fun to like change things and like see what happens and so I honestly just like build this stuff just so I can take pictures of it. <laughs> That's the most fun part to me. I hate the actual editing video part, like clipping all the stuff and like oh, really? putting voice over to it. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I guess that's bad, but I hate videos. <laughs> well, at some point you may want to just hire a, a editor, right? Yeah. I've thought about that. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I don't know. I try to keep it. I say I'm not very personal, but at the same time, I am a little bit personal. Like, I'm afraid if I hand it off to somebody, my videos are going to seem like very, like, they're probably already boring, but even more boring than they already are. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if somebody yeah. else edits the stuff and... I don't oh, know. it's definitely a challenge. Yeah, I've, I've had to hire a few editors over the years, and there's, that's the hardest part, is it, especially if they don't really understand woodworking, because it, the thing that oh, drives yeah. me, the, the hardest thing about trying to work with an editor is, who doesn't understand woodworking is that I would like stop a saw cut like a half second before they do or something, you know, <laughs> it's like, wait, I just wish you would edit that a little bit differently. And yeah. so, plus I know the things to keep and the things not to keep on certain shots. So I just edit my own now, you know, and I think it's just, again, like you were saying, I just feel like it's part of my job. Yeah. Uh, and I just have gotten a system where it's fairly quick and I don't mind it. I actually, um, I was filming some videos for Popular Mechanics, and so I thought it was like, like, it hurt my soul a little bit to do it because they would give me the plans and like I was supposed to film it and like film the voiceover. Like I would send them all the raw footage and they would edit it down. And like the whole time I'm building, I'm like worried about like what are they going to cut out and what are they going to like leave and like 
I don't know. It was very stressful just like in the process of filming everything just thinking about what they're going to be seeing and what they're going to think is like stupid or not stupid <laughs> they're going to see you know? that weird that weird stuff where you're just kind of wandering around your shop before you actually do the shot yeah <laughs> yeah or like singing or you know like, <laughs> like you had, it was not very fun to film the process because i had to like pretend to be professional and i'm not (laughs) (laughs) just fake it till you make it (laughs) exactly (laughs) what was the what was that what was the deal with the popular mechanics what was that um they just they reached out and they i guess like had some older projects from their website that they hadn't like had video content on and so they had like the copy and the article and the plans and everything but they wanted to put video content with it so they basically just wanted somebody to like build this and film it and then they would edit it down like to their own style and their own specs or or whatever but were, were you satisfied with the results um so far i was honestly surprised i think i'm not very creative in my editing style and I'm, like it's one of the things that i'm trying to work on is like getting like like zooming in on things where like i normally i put all my clips in my editor and I don't zoom in on anything. Like it is what it is. Like whatever I shot is whatever you see. And, um, so I've, they did like a lot of creative, like zooming in or like panning around or like just effects that I would have never thought about adding. And so when I saw them edit my footage, I was like, Whoa, that's my footage. Like I filmed that. That's crazy. And so I, it kind of sparked me to get a little bit more creative in my own editing. I think so. I was kind of, I was satisfied with, what they ended up coming up with from my footage, I was kind of shocked. Nice. But, yeah. Well, that seems like it was probably a good opportunity for you. Yeah, it's a, it was a. I was very surprised that they reached out to me, like, because I'm, I don't know. I just feel like I'm really small and like still. Well, I think you have a you have a popular. unique style. Um, even the pieces that you make, so you can look through, like the thumbnails on your channel and. It's a distinct look to your pieces. They all kind of have that. I don't know if you even are aware of that. No, or not. I didn't know. I, I always look at them like this. None of this looks the same. Like I don't, you know, some people have like their thumbnail, like mm-hmm. templates or whatever. And like, yeah, yeah. You can look, and I never feel like that when I look at mine. Like this doesn't look branded at all. But I'm <laughs> no, glad but you the, said that. Like, the projects, the projects that you build, the furniture and everything has a distinct look to it, I think. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Um, How much time do you spend on working on those thumbnails? Oh, like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's like the yeah. hardest part, I think, is the thumbnail. It's like, ugh. Because it's what your video lives and dies by the thumbnail. People click just solely on that. I know, yeah. I I guess I need to get better at it. But honestly, like, every time when I'm photographing, so I try to figure out a way to get myself in the picture because yeah. I feel like those do better on Best thumbnails. Best practices, like, right? <laughs> and... Like, so all, if you look through my thumbnails, like they literally all look the same. It's like me standing next to something like, you know, like same thing over and over, but that's what I do for my thumbnails. Like I'll yeah. take probably like 10 shots of me standing in different like ways with the thing that I built. And then I'll just pick one of those and stick a graphic on it with a title. And like, that's my thumbnail. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I need to try new things, I guess. Well, I think it works. I mean, Check that's, <laughs> hey, that's what YouTube suggests. They're like, put your face on there. People want to see your face. And I guess it's true because I can, if I'm looking through my feed, I can see one of your videos because I see you. I don't have to look at the title or anything. I can just, oh, okay, it's a share video. Yeah. yeah. I guess my face is my brand. Like that brand's my thumbnail. Like, it is. Know. Yeah. Right. Everybody's becoming their own brand now, right? I know. It's yeah. marketing. Ugh. <laughs> How's the, so you, you're also, you were making an income off of your plans too. You're, you're designing and selling your own yeah, plans. Yeah, I sell plans. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have my own little like storefront or whatever. It's like a Shopify store. Um, and I sell plans over there. I started that probably, I don't know if it was last year. I think it was the year before last I started that. And like I slowly add to it. Some things I still provide for free on my blog and then some I sell on my my store. Most of the time I provide the plans for free on my blog, but if they want like a printable copy, they have to like buy it. Right. right. So does that do those sell pretty well for you? Some months are better than others. I don't know. It just, it ebbs and flows. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's all based on traffic too. Like how much traffic I get to my website that month, which also ebbs and flows based on the season and stuff. And lately, I guess, cause lumber prices, you know, (laughs) not, (laughs) 
yeah it's kind of dead. <laughs> not been so hot but yeah <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, it's like a total opposite of, of last year did you see a huge spike during 2020 yeah yeah, yeah. Like everybody like did. i started um full time because i was working at a factory um and like doing this on the side and the factory shut down so i lost my job and that was in the fall it was october of 2019 so when I started full time and then like the very first of last year when everything like shut down for the first time, like everything was horrible, like worst income ever. And then like a month later, it was like the best income. Like, so I'm like, I feel like I don't have anything to base anything off of, you know, like I can't compare this year to last year because last year was crazy and I didn't, I wasn't full time the year before. So I'm just kind of like winging full time content create. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, 2020 was a I mean, it was a bad year, but as far as creating content, it was a good, good year for, for everybody. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we were all making quite a, quite a bit of money in 2020. What kind of factory work were you doing before you did this? Um, I worked at, I guess I won't say where, I worked at a factory that made small engines. Undisclosed here. name factory. Yeah. yeah. Oh, small <laughs> engine parts. Yeah. Or small was, engines. Well, we built small engines, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I actually worked there as an intern in college, and then I went to a different factory um, and worked for a few years, and then I came back. And I was basically, it was funny because it was me and um, three, like, older men, like, over 50. And so I'm like, one of these things doesn't belong here. But we were like a team of, um, I, we, they called us special projects. So basically, we would design and build machines to go on the assembly line. So we were basically like replacing people with machines, which is a controversial topic, but it was a really fun job. Like I got to program robots and we would like program the machines and wire up the machines. And it was, it was a lot of fun, like best job ever. Oh, well you but, were doing like high end work there. I mean, designing and programming stuff. Yeah, it was. You say you uh, work at a factory. It makes it sound like you're just like an assembly line or something, you know. You're well, like I mean, we worked on, we worked on <laughs> the assembly line. We basically built the assembly line. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a ton of fun. I loved it, but they shut down, so. Is that where you learned how to design it and were you able to use those skills to design your furniture? Um, not really, because they're, set. I mean, everything's like metal and like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of similar, but not quite the same. I feel like I have like a engineering mind, you know, like I just kind of see like how things go together and like that's, sure. you know, I don't know. So I guess it like benefited me there and here, but it wasn't really the same kind of work. Right. You yeah. use, what do you design on your projects on SketchUp? Yeah, SketchUp. But I'm backwards. Like I will sketch it on paper and build it, and then I'll go and sketch it on SketchUp, like after the fact. Um, because I tried to sketch something my very first time sketching anything on SketchUp, and I like put it all together, and then I built it, and like there was a problem when I built it. Like it didn't work quite the right way, so I had to modify it when I built it. In order to modify my SketchUp drawing, it was like an absolute pain in the butt because there was like trim pieces everywhere. And I had, you know, and like crown molding and stuff. And I had to go back and like, you can't really just extend that when she, and anyway, so I was like, never again, I will build it first and then I will draw it on SketchUp. Because oh, I really? Plans. Like I only draw SketchUp just so I can like sell the plans. That's like, pretty I interesting. I don't actually use them. Oh, see, I, I, I'm i completely the opposite. I don't step foot in my shop without a plan from SketchUp. And I didn't, I used to be more like you. I could kind of wing it a little bit better, but now I'm like, I got to see how everything fits together and make sure. And then I can just like, come into the shop and kind of bang it out. But that, it, you know, the one thing that I don't do, see, I only know like a little bit of sketch up just enough to kind of put things together sort of, but like the, when you're mentioning the crown molding and trim, I just, I don't put that in the sketch up. Cause I think that oh. you're right. It's just a recipe for disaster. If you want to try to change that, <laughs> it's so hard. Oh, I mean, maybe I should like skip the trim and like add that last and like yeah. just, build the main stuff and then if I need to make changes it's not that big of a deal but I don't know yeah I, I don't know it's I guess everybody kind of approaches SketchUp differently I I do it kind of basically as an extension of 
paper and pencil kind of drawings in a way. So I don't like put the joinery in there or anything until like you do after the fact, I'll put it in there if I'm going to be giving those plans away to somebody. I just want to make sure that they have know where everything goes and have a little step by step. But yeah, yeah, I guess everybody's a lot of people are switching over to fusion now. There's probably better options. I've not tried anything. I used to, like, when I was working in the factory, like, we'd use AutoCAD. And, like, SketchUp is, like, similar, but not really the same. And I guess I'm just, like, stuck in my ways again. I don't really want to learn anything new. If if I can figure out how to make this work, like, I'll just make this work. You know what I mean? Like, but there's probably better options than SketchUp out there. I'm just too lazy to learn. <laughs> what do you, when, when you meet people... And they ask you what you do. What do you tell them you do for a living? It depends. It Like, if it's complete strangers, I just say, like, I make YouTube videos because that feels like it's enough to not ask any additional questions, you know? Except <laughs> like, for, wait, you can make money at that? <laughs> I know, yeah. It's, it's hard. And then if you tell people that you, like, I don't really build stuff for people. Like, I'll build stuff if I think that the content will do well. I'll build it for somebody, but if somebody's like, hey, I want something just like you already made, like, I don't have time for that. Like, I don't have time to do that and make YouTube videos too. Like, it's got to be something new. So anyway, like, I don't really like to tell people that I do woodworking because they either, one, think that I'm, like, hot gluing things together, you know, or they think, like, I'm taking orders. Then, like, I'm not doing either of those things. So I uh, try to avoid telling people that I do, do woodworking. Um... But then if you say content creation, they don't know what that is. No. I'm like, you have to explain that. I'm like, I don't want to explain that. Um, and sometimes I say I have a blog and like that yeah. suffices. So it just depends. If, if they're like an older person, I'll just say like, I run my own business and hope they don't ask any questions. But I don't know. It just, it depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. What I yeah, well, I, I, I totally, totally get what that. What do you yeah. tell people? Like, well, it, a lot of times they'll, you know, say if somebody comes over to the house, they don't know me, they're coming here to work on the refrigerator or something, I don't know, and, they, and they'll see my garage door open and they'll say, oh, you got a workshop in there. And so then they're curious about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I do some woodworking. And then they, the first thing they think of is, yes, that I make it like for commission or something. And I had a guy come in here a few months ago to do some work for us and he says oh well, do you got a card i know somebody who might need some work done and i'm like a card no <laughs> i don't do work and i don't have cards which is actually a lie i i do i did have some business cards made uh last year and i, I just i love them because all they say on it is just steve ramsey there's nothing else it's in like eight point <laughs> font right in the middle of the card Steve Ramsey. I figured that's all you need to know. You can you just Google. You'll find me. You can that's find hilarious. out anything you want. There's no there's no reason <laughs> for that. But in general, I think if people ask me, I just tell them I, I'm a video producer, and then they. That just, makes, that's that sounds yeah. fancy. If they follow it up, they they usually think it's like I would make I don't know industrial films or just in, educational. <laughs> I try, I actually try to avoid the whole YouTube thing because it just, to me, it opens a can of worms that I don't really want to, yeah. I don't really want to get into. Uh, do you have any, do you have like a, uh, like a dream project, something you just really have been wanting to do for a long time? I want to build my house. That's, you mean yourself, build it, actually build, we've build thought it. About, yeah, we've you. thought, we've done like a lot of research on like, like how you would stick build a house. I mean, like basic framing like to frame out the interior non-structurally, like we're good. Like we've got that, whatever, like we can frame up a bathroom wall and a bedroom wall, whatever. But like the structure part of it, like we've done quite a bit of research and like looking at some like very simple house plans with like simple roof lines and stuff and like figured out like how we think we could build it. And like we've considered building it, like me and my husband and I think at some point you'd have to hire like a crane operator if you were going to do like trusses and stuff. And so I, we've kind of looked into it. So we might one day like actually physically build the house, but we might not. I don't, it's kind of one of those. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We've looked into it. I think we're, I think we're capable if we really wanted to. It just depends on if we really, really want to. That's, <laughs> a, lot of, it's a, lot of trouble That's a pretty if big undertaking. That's a pretty big undertaking. <laughs> yeah, well, you get lots of video footage. I know there's there's. Oh, I get a lot that... of hate comments. I'm sure yeah. you're doing that wrong. 
<laughs> oh yeah especially if you show anything electrical i know electrical oh, yeah. don't, my, i do not do that anymore my husband's an electrical engineer and like oh. we wired our house now and like i mean everything's inspected and all that or whatever but like before i put a ceiling on here you know there's like wires running across the trusses which is mm -hmm. like acceptable but i had i put on tiktok like all these comments about you're crazy. I can't believe you'd wire your house like that. And I'm like, it was inspected and everything is fine. Like yeah. whatever. Anyway, I had one last summer. I was building a little cabinet for the pantry in the, our laundry room. And <laughs> I, I stuck it in there. I put the pantry in and it was covering up an outlet, an electrical outlet. And it was like people obsess over that kind of thing. I'm like, well, I would never use that outlet. It's in the closet, basically. And they're like, well, isn't that the code? It's like, well, whatever. I learned something new. I shouldn't be showing that on video. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, pretty funny. But yeah. Do you ever definitely... get like, I guess you've been doing this for like a long time, so maybe you're used to it by now, but I get so much anxiety sometimes just like filming things and the entire time I'm filming thinking, like trying to like, like know beforehand what yeah. criticisms I'm going to get. And like, it just drags you down. Like at the end of the project, you're like, I hated this entire process. And like, I only hated it because I was like filming it, you know? And I'm yeah. like, how do you get past that? You don't. <laughs> it just goes on and on. No, it, it, I guess what happens is, at least for me, is that I just have become much better at um, anticipating what people are going to say and avoiding those situations, you know, and especially safety kind of things, just knowing like. And that's where the editing is kind of important. If you know that, oh, uh, there's a little thing, a little, I probably shouldn't show that on video because I'm just going to get all the comments it's, or just cut those out altogether and, and tell the story differently. But that, yeah, that kind of stuff is, it'll, it'll always, just, will always be there. <laughs> it'll always be <laughs> second. You know, it's funny because on the podcast I do, we talk to YouTubers in all different genres on YouTube, people who do everything. And there's one thing that's for certain is everybody constantly shares the same the fears the same self-doubt the same you know you get like one video that doesn't perform well and you're like what what happened people don't like me now you know yeah <laughs> and yeah after 13 years of doing this it's still still get that okay well it's good to know that i know that's not very encouraging is. though is, is it that well, was but, i mean it's, it's good to know it just is what it is like just you know <laughs> yeah quit waiting for it to go away because it's not like just it's not. also not worth putting too much stock in comments because true, people yeah. who, who leave comments are usually i don't know really fired up about one thing or another and so that you can't let that sway <laughs> sway i guess what you're doing uh, yeah. too much do you, have you just been totally enjoying the experience though for the most part being making youtube videos yeah, I mean, it's been fun. It's been, uh, it's more fun when I have like a video like do really well and like I can log on and see like I gained so many subscribers. It, I had like two back to back like really good videos that I just didn't really expect to do well. Um, and they were like a month apart. So for a good month, like I had like a whole bunch of new subscribers. And then like as it started to taper off, the next video like picked up and so anyway, now it's like dying off and I'm not, I don't have any like good performing videos now. So like I just get on and like my subscriber, you know, over the 28 days or whatever, it just keeps getting lower and lower. And like, yeah. YouTube well, loves to tell you, this point. <laughs> like, you, you log into that like YouTube creator and it tells you how you're doing that YouTube will like, this is the worst video out of your past <laughs> 10. You know, it's like so harsh. I know. And it's like. You need work. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what people aren't watching your video the more way they used to. Here's why. <laughs> like, I thank know. you for pointing that out. It's like, oh, just I put the knife in and twist it. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do, if you get your top video out of the top 10, then they do the confetti. Oh, they still do the confetti. I haven't seen that in a while. Maybe I just haven't had any good performance. I don't know. I've not had a good video in a Yeah, maybe a while, that's it. So I don't know. It used to be a little, ooh, <laughs> this is your top out of the last 10. I've been doing lately though I've been doing those shorts which have been really they've I've, been doing I've really seen well. some of your yeah. shorts. I tried a short and it was like it was the worst 
like I had so many thumbs down. Yeah. And I'm like, what was wrong with this? Like no, I literally it's posted fine. the same thing on TikTok and everybody was like, Yay! <laughs> Post it on YouTube and they're like, boo. Yeah. Well, I don't know. well when they I first to... started doing that, it was that way and now it's gotten it, they're not for subscribers, they're for non subscribers. And so it's just a way for people to find your channel really, I think. So do I understand correctly that when you post a short, like it takes a minute for it to like show up as a short? So I guess originally, yeah. like at first it shows up as a video. So I guess probably like your subscribers see it as a video and they're like, what the heck is this? And right. Like, hey, and then it takes a minute for yeah. it to pick up. Yeah. And that's part of the, I think that's part of YouTube's problem. And I think they're, they're working on doing it. So eventually I think it'll be only visible on mobile, which makes sense because right now, if you're looking at it on a laptop, or on a desktop and you see that vertical video come through it, it just doesn't make any sense. Why is this guy yeah. doing this? And I hate it and I have to leave a comment about it. But then <laughs> usually that goes away pretty quick, but the, it takes a few days for those to get on that short shelf. My, oh, I didn't realize it took so long. Yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to watch because it can take two days or I had one, I posted like a week and a half ago how to transfer like inkjet to photo to a, a board you know it's actually right. i've done this video like three or four times too. <laughs> but I thought, i'll do a <laughs> short version of it and so i i did that and it took nine days before on all of a sudden you can see the chart and all of a sudden boom nine days later youtube blesses you with the short shelf and then you get all these views from people who aren't who never watch your channel and then right ideally a lot of those you know start watching the rest of your content and they start buying your stuff at some point but you know so i don't even watch shorts like i see them like when i pull up youtube but yeah. like i don't really watch them so are people just like watching these i guess because i feel like it's weird that they pick up so fast you know once they, they do. put them as a short but i'm like who's watching these you know what i mean i feel the same thing about google stories i don't know if you know about like Google's it's more of like a website thing hmm. but I guess it's it's kind of similar it's almost like a Pinterest pin but it's like a Google thing and I'm like I don't even know how to watch web stories but apparently if you get your web story featured on Google like it oh I didn't even know about so much that traffic and anyway I, I just don't get I guess I yeah. just don't I don't have time to watch anything so I'm like who's watching all this stuff like I don't right. understand because there's a lot of binge watching with shorts I think because it's easy to just scroll through them one after guess, another yeah. and if you've got something that's like I got a catchy title and especially if it's controversial if people aren't gonna if people are gonna disagree with you those do really well I mean I have a, my share of those definitely yeah. and they they perform really well so I guess are you on TikTok? I'm not, no. You gotta I, post your shorts on TikTok because if it's in the least bit controversial, like, yeah. they'll skyrocket, yeah. You know, and that's, isn't that just the case with all, all social media, though? It's yeah. like, they, they really thrive on us versus them and controversy. And it's like, yeah. it's so, it's kind of sad to see the way everything yeah. is becoming like that. And but people keep posting stuff like that because it gets them more views, which makes them more money. So it's just like a snowball of that, you know, like, it, it, yeah. I posted a TikTok video about um, how you can use like a speed square, how you could draw like a 30 degree line, like just pivot this and like draw a line. Anyway, like so many people were like, if you don't know how to do that already, like you're an idiot and all this. And I'm like, I'm just posting a helpful tip. I don't know why yeah. this is, anyway, it blew up like over a million and a half views at this point. And everybody in the comments is just arguing like, you're an idiot. Yeah. You shouldn't own one of those if you don't know that. And I'm like, did you never learn anything new? Like, ever? <laughs> I know. It's a weird thing. I've noticed, yeah. though, that in the shorts, my name isn't Steve. It's this guy. Because all of the comments are like, this guy doesn't know what oh, he's yeah. doing. Or, this guy <laughs> on it. And so, yeah, I, I should just have that should be the name of my shorts. This guy it does should, That something. would be funny. You should start a separate channel. This, this guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's who I am. Yeah, I did one that was like how to, it's an old school technique. There's nothing new about it, how to cope corners in a, in a baseboard, you know, inside corners and did really well. It was like three or three million views or something on this thing. But like most of the comments are just from people like, well, oh, just cut it with a miter and put caulking on it, you know, or something. And I, you know, the funny thing is, is that would have, 
it wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten those comments if I had done that using actual wood baseboards, because then it makes sense because you don't want to put caulk on a, on wood baseboards, but I used that pre-painted, you know, primed stuff you get at Home Depot. And so, and so when they saw that, they're like, well, why don't you? So actually it was my not thinking that through, which benefited the video. Is there anything in your shop that you are lacking? Anything you want um, to get? One of the biggest things that I was just telling my husband the other day, like my next tool investment is a drill press. Like, oh, you don't have a drill I was, press. I just um, did a closet system for a friend of mine and they wanted like these shoe cubbies. And I didn't want to do like lap joints because I didn't trust myself to be like accurate enough to like get them to line up well because it was like going to be several laps and anyway so i just decided to use dowels because i'm like it's just like shoes like it doesn't need a lot of weight or anything so um i was using like the little rockler dowel jig you know yeah and like i mean it works fine but like it tends to wiggle a little bit if you don't get it clamped right and like it can shift and anyway i was just thinking the whole time i was building that like i need a drill press like to drill dowel holes for stuff and anyway so that's probably i don't have a dust collection system or a drill press and those are two things that i would probably like to have i don't have a joiner either but i honestly don't really like i'm sure it would come in handy but i don't think i would use it for the floor space that it would take up so i just yeah. don't think it's worth it but i think that are you thinking about uh dedicated dust collection system with pipes running yeah. through individual tools yeah um and i don't i could i mean i could get one now but i guess because like we're kind of in limbo as far as like if we're gonna stay here and like if we're gonna leave and if how i'm gonna rearrange my shop if we do stay here and so i just haven't like invested in it yet because i don't want to like set it up and then have to like move it because i'm thinking i would want to run like hard pipe in the ceiling you know and then so i just don't really want to do all the work and then have to like pack it up and move it or you know so i just haven't done it yet yeah i'm, I'm kind of with you on the joiner too the, i used to have a jointer and i get comments from people once in a while asking me why i don't have a jointer because i think that in a lot of woodworking it's a necessity if you're doing and i see that as more of really high-end woodworking where those those degrees of flatness i guess that's the word i'm looking for are super critical and it's much more critical than the type of woodworking i do which is right. doesn't really require that yeah. that's how i am like i mean i think i think we are very similar in our like philosophy as far as like I don't, correct me if i'm wrong but like good enough is good enough oh totally like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i think that's so why i like watching your like, videos oh. yeah well thank you yeah same same yeah. to you. I just, there's a few instances where I might buy raw lumber or like uh, rough sawn, I mean, yeah. and a jointer might come in handy, but for the most part, like I can get good enough on the table saw, you know, mm. with a yeah, a long rip fence and a yeah. couple clamps and yeah, so. Yeah, that's, that's true. And I think that's the nice thing about woodworking is there's just so many different ways to approach it. And if you, you know, want to dedicate yourself to doing, you know, super high end with all the fancy joints that you can possibly experiment with. And there's plenty of room for that. If you want to use hand tools to make projects, there's plenty of people to help you out with that. And so there's just this wide range. And I think everybody just kind of finds their own spot that works for them. Yeah. Yeah, people all the time are like, why don't you do like real woodworking? Like, why don't you get rid of your pocket holes and do real woodworking? Oh, yeah. Like, if I did, I couldn't run a business because I wouldn't be able to put out a video but like once a month. And like, that's just not how mm -hmm. this works. Like, yeah. No. I don't like that term, real woodworking. It kind of drives me crazy. I know, yeah. I think there's a proper way to do woodworking. You're not doing it right. Exactly. Like, there's really not a wrong way. I mean, I don't no. know. I feel like you have to be thorough, but practical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And you know, there's people, I mean, there's people who love doing that kind of woodworking. And there's a lot of people who do woodworking just because they enjoy the process of it. And then there's woodworkers <laughs> who just, 
<laughs> and there's woodworkers who just want the project. I just want to build this thing. I just want to get it done and do it. So, you know. Yeah. And then, then there's people who just putter around the shop all day and <laughs> organize things. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you ever find that where you just kind of walk into your shop and you're just like, I, I, I should be building something, but I'm kind of like sorting things instead, yes. sweeping the floor. Yes, I do that a lot. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> well, what's next for your channel? Do you have any any goals in, the, say, the next year or so? Or is it still kind of up, up in the air because of your living situation? Um, I guess my, my biggest goal for my channel this year was to get to 100,000 um, subscribers by the end of the year, which is, I feel like, kind of a hard... It's hard to make a goal of, like, you want so many subscribers because you only have so much control over that. And, like, a, a goal, I feel like you should have control over it, you know? And, like, you do, but you don't. And so, anyway, that's my goal. If I get there, I get there. And if I don't, like, it is what it is. But I, in order to do that, I try to keep consistently putting out videos in hopes that, you know, one of them at some point will take off and will help me get to that number. But, um, so that's my goal for the channel but upcoming projects i mean just a little of everything i'm building my mom a bedroom set for her guest bedroom so i'll probably show all of those pieces bedroom sets and dressers especially seem to do really well which is good because that's like my favorite thing to build so um it looks like you've got a spot on the wall right behind you for that silver play button when you get it yeah <laughs> I probably won't keep it out here. It'll get like dirty. It gets all dusty. Yeah, I know. Mine are inside yeah. <laughs> in my office too. Yeah. yeah, I'll probably hang it like above my TV so I can stare at it. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you were just working for that gold play button next. I, yeah, that's a little yeah. bit further down the, right. down the road. It's exciting though. When you get that 100,000 and you get that silver play button, it's exciting. And YouTube sends it out to you with a note and it's really, it's real nice. Yeah. I feel like I would feel legit. Like if yeah. I had... Like a hundred thousand, because I feel like if you, I feel like you can't say not that I really want to say, but I feel like you can't say I'm a YouTuber until like you have a hundred thousand. You know what I mean? It's like a at weird, that point, you're weird. like you're legit. Like yeah, yeah, okay, you're a YouTuber. You're <laughs> so not legit. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, I and mean, it's really weird though how much stock we put in the subscriber number. Really, it's such an ego number, and but. I guess because it's... there are people out there with like millions of subscribers, but they don't get that many views on their oh, that's, videos. And that's then there are mine. people out there with yeah. like not very many subs, and they get tons of it. And so, like, yeah, it's a vanity number. It doesn't mean yeah. anything, but it. Yeah. No, I, I'm happy if I, I get a video now that gets a hundred thousand views. You know, and that used to be that would be kind of normal, but you know, I don't sweat it too much anymore. I kind of I'm kind of over all of that, I suppose. <laughs> But it's a, I don't know, it's a good number to just kind of look at and know. But yeah, then when you look at your analytics and you see how many of those subscribers actually watch your videos, it's I know, like, yeah. oh, I see. <laughs> Basically, it's a like button. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, Shara, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being my first guest on this series. Yeah, I thanks that for was having good. me. I didn't realize I was your first guest. Yeah. So well, I'm what I wanted to extremely honored. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to kind of start with a guest that represented sort of newer YouTube, really. And I don't want, there's so many new creators who are doing so many really cool things, like what you're doing and making these big projects is really, uh, it's really rewarding to see. And it's really satisfying to see that there's kind of this new generation of woodworkers coming up on YouTube. And I just, I think they need this kind of exposure, at least what little I can offer and just to get to know these people. I think that's really exciting. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate it. And we'll look forward to watching more of your videos and for everybody watching this video, be sure to check out Shara Woodshop Diaries. I'll have a link down in the description so you can just click on it and you can watch all of her videos and subscribe. Let's get her up to that 100,000 mark. So right there in that background is going to be that silver play button. Well, at least at least for one day and the She's going to yeah, move it away. Yeah, I'll take a picture of it. Yeah, so it doesn't get all sawdust. All right, thanks for watching, everybody.